The hour has come, my friends. Today we ride for fantasy Minecraft, for glory, for the honor of the necromancer. If he has any honor left these days. Hello, friends, welcome in. Thanks so much for the hype train that's already rolling. Ivy Sinner, Safar Augen, Scotsman, Anonymous, thank you for the subs and the gifted subs. Scotty, thank you for the 31 months as well. I'm going to pour my tea, if you'll excuse me one second. Skyrim OST. I really wish I could recognize the Skyrim soundtrack, but having not played Skyrim, it's actually kind of difficult. I just go by whatever people in the chat tell me at this point. Ah, that's a lovely brew. Here's to you, my friends. Thank you so much, Wailing Emu, for taking us over the line to level 2 of the Hype Train, 33-month Prime Resub. Appreciate it, thank you. So here we are, back on Fantasy Minecraft Fabric. And I'm going to quickly log in. It doesn't look like anybody else is online, which is pretty standard, I think. A lot of people hop on later in the day. There's some folks from the US, some people who stream later in the UK. So I am the early bird today. We're starting even earlier than we usually do at this point because I just had, like, I was done with my morning routine, getting breakfast, cup of tea, like, all of that stuff before, like, 11.30, I guess. And then I just realized, you know what, I want to stream now because I don't think I'm really going to get anything done in, like, an hour between 12 and 1. And I want to just stream and get it out of the way. And that way I can be done maybe a little earlier and we can have dinner at a reasonable time and maybe like get out into the garden and quickly like pick some blackberries while it's still like light in the sky and everything so yeah i guess i'm uh, i guess i'm on the stream a little earlier today so hopefully everyone's uh, fine with that stopping by welcome in uh, i have no idea why the um, pink pixel right there like doesn't light up the rest of them do on all of the other scenes for whatever reason the pink one that one refuses to that's the control square. That's the one that, like, tells all of the other ones what to do. For whatever reason, it just doesn't light up when the pink scene comes up. I don't know quite why. <laughs> it's not one I programmed myself either. That's just, like, a solid color that the uh, the software throws up there for you. So, yeah, genuinely not sure. But, hey, no worries. We are going to do a little bit of building, actually, to start off here. I want to continue doing what we were doing before, getting some, some wood... Uh, laid in to the upper floor of the creepy mansion um, probably continuing to do a little bit more building with uh, deep slate bricks up here and we started this last stream and I was really happy with the results we got this um, what's it called brimwood yeah brimwood um, that is now providing these kind of creepy looking upstairs windows that kind of feel a little bit like um, haunted house kind of style I guess so we're going to do some stuff with those. I'm going to turn down the music just a touch more so I can bring the overall volume up a little bit. So I've been noticing that the volume on these streams is a little quiet. But there are some things that are just like unnecessarily loud. So yeah, there we go. Broken Physics, thanks so much for the 43 months. Saren, thank you so much for the 7. Appreciate you both. Hope you're well. So yeah, we're going to hop down here. We're going to start laying in... Oh, that's cobbled deep slate that's not what we want we're going to start laying in some deep slate bricks and we'll just continue this line of the build that we've already established and then once we get to here i think we're actually going to we'll continue with the the deep slate bricks but then we're going to continue this border that we've set up to transition between two different types of material so these putrid trapdoors that we got from mine cells on the last stream are going to be a really good transition block. The difference being, of course, we can't lay them in around a corner like this. So we're going to have to find something else to go in the corners here. Um, maybe some putrid planks or something like that will work out. But I like the idea of having this line along the front here. Another one in the corner there. Build looks so cool. Thank you. It's getting there. I'm sort of freestyling a lot of this as I go. I haven't really come in with a plan or any kind of creative build for this because a lot of the blocks in this mod pack are retextured from vanilla, so even the stuff that I would know how to build with looks different, and I'm not as keen on building with exactly the same stuff, but we'll we'll see how it works out, right? Uh, the Gekromancer is here in the, uh, in the courtyard, just kind of chilling. Um, 
Oh, and the soundtrack is really going for it today. I like this. But yeah, having that kind of border around the top part there, I think, is going to work really well. And uh, I don't know, maybe we could put some, like... Are there gargoyles or anything in this? Can I get, like, gargoyles or... Or, like, statues? I guess we could do something with armor stands regardless, but... Statue... Statue... Oh, there's king statues and the goddess statues. Oh, there are little frogs? Maybe we should just have some frogs. <laughs> How do we make these? Oh, a tadpole in a bucket and then stone around it. So you're basically, like, imprisoning a tadpole forever. That's kind of sad. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll do something different in the end. But either way, I think maybe we can... We can create this, like... Yeah, this corner piece here can kind of come down a little bit. A couple of blocks on each side, maybe a stair underneath that, or a wall or something to give it, like, a, a support. And I had some other ideas with what we gathered on the last stream. Because we went and did a bunch of stuff from the graveyard mod. And, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see if we can do anything cool with that. Like, there's some iron bars that are really great. Um, where do we find those? Yeah, in here. And then there's these candle holders, right? So what I was thinking, because... You can place these in midair and they don't have to connect to something. So I sort of wonder if we can use these almost as like bracketed like decorations and have them kind of dangling from the underside of like a, a, a tower roof or something to make or, or even have them come out from that like they're supporting the roof structure. But I like the idea of using those decoratively since they don't need to be attached to a specific block. Um, yeah, we'll see if we can do something with that, right? I need a bit more of this brimwood, because I really like the brimwood colour for the upstairs floor of this. Some folks have been busy around here as well. Like, this looks like a little a, like blacksmith's forge kind of thing. That looks like a mythical sausage build to me, but I could be wrong. Um, there's some very talented builders on here. Um, let's see now. Yeah, I think maybe we can do something different with that. Maybe have that be like a pillar of wood coming down instead of deep slate bricks so it doesn't blend in so much with the rest of the manse. But I do want to texture this a little bit. Maybe bring in some natural silk touch deep slate instead of all deep slate bricks because it starts to look a little samey after a while, right? But I sort of wonder if maybe we'll go with stripped wood here instead. Let's not uh, use an axe to get rid of that, though. Maybe if we... Um, we'll put a temp block in there so that we can place this upright... We could even use the um, the log texture instead of the stripped log texture here, as long as we have something that we can use to to hide the end texture. Because I like the end texture a lot, but I don't think it's quite right for what we want to do here. Got a very Dark Lord aesthetic going on. Uh, not been following the Fancy SMP a lot, only so many hours in the day. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, no, th this whole thing is like I'm I'm a I'm a necromancer. This is the the character that I've decided to build. Um, I have a, a floating eye, very Terraria kind of floating eye that I can summon. And uh, this thing does a truckload of damage when it attacks stuff. So that's sort of the uh, the vibes around here. It's very, it's very floating eyeball. It's very floating bloodshot eyeball. So we'll actually do this. Get some more brim wood in. Up to about there, maybe. And then, yeah, we'll we'll leave it logs for now. Alright, yep, decided to just exit the building. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I like that as like a, um, a kind of wooden support structure for the upstairs. We're going to farm some more Brimwood. Really early stream? Yes, yeah, I decided to start a little earlier today just so I could um, get a head start on some of this stuff. We're going to be doing our usual thing. We're streaming Elden Ring after we're done with the fantasy Minecraft stuff, so... We're probably going to be switching over to that uh, a little later. I really need to organize my inventory before I start doing all of this. Um, let's bundle these for a second. Shove the saplings in there, make sure that we can collect all of the logs. Yeah, perfect, perfect. And then there's just this creeper hole back here, I guess. Um, 
Let's drop a bunch of stuff in storage. Also, yeah, my axe... For whatever reason, when I have this hovered, it's still... Bringing up all of the spells, so... Maybe just because it's a weapon, I guess? I don't know. But uh, that makes it a little difficult to... Use my number hotkeys to scroll between stuff, so I'm going to be... Forgetting about that occasionally. Um, let's... Yeah, let's unpack a lot of this stuff. We've got another netherite upgrade template, which is nice. At least I don't have to worry too much about accidentally using the last one. We will naturally keep some of the spruce saplings, since we'll use those to regrow stuff. These twigs we can just craft into sticks to get more lighting. Um... Then, yeah, these... Obviously, there's a lot of stuff here that we can... ...dispose of. We've got these putrid logs as well, which I might just make into more trapdoors, but the flagpoles are also another option if we want wooden supports as opposed to the candle holders, right? So we'll get stuck into those a little later. Did I put the obsidian again? Of course, here, nether stuff. That makes sense. Um, that's left over from trying to make a nether portal out to more... Far-flung regions of the world. Got a lot of XP bottles here. A little bit of modded armor. Skeleton rip... <laughs> rip cage. We'll leave all of these in here, probably to never be touched again. There's also this chorus totem, which is a... A fun concept, but perhaps what not one that I will... Be that interested in using. So many like rings and things in here. Shouldn't be living in Merkwood then if you're the necromancer. I wish that I had the time and patience to build something as like complex and detailed as Dol Guldur, but I tragically don't. <laughs> so I'm making do with what I have. Um, skeleton skulls can go in here with the rest of the snacks, and then we'll get some sleep real quick. I also need to put stuff like bone meal away. Actually, no, we don't, because we want to grow some more of these brimwood saplings, so let's not worry about that for now. I want to have enough room in here to put the nature's compass away. And then... The katana. Oh yeah, the bundle has a lot of miscellaneous stuff in there that would be worth stashing. We've got some wither skeleton skulls as well. Maybe we'll fight the wither today. That could be something fun to do. For a given value of fun, obviously. That could be something fun and not at all, like, scary to do. Got a few more diamond tools, which can go in my vast collection of diamond tools at this point. I've got so many. But that's good because we can reroll the rarities on them, so we can have those on hand if we need them. I also want to know if I can acquire more of this wall moss anywhere, because that kind of rules. Like, I'm a big fan of this color, and it can be a nice gradient with the... Um, the stuff we're getting from mine cells, but I don't have a means of regrowing this, so it may be something that we have to go out and find. Unless it's a, there's like a crafting recipe for it, but that I, I do doubt. Are you late? No, we just started. We just got started. I'm really just sorting out all of the stuff that's in my backpack right now, so... Not to worry, you have arrived just in time to see a stream. There's also a netherite sword with absolutely no rarity, which is really funny because everything else has rarity, so I wonder what the deal is with that. Don't think there really is a deal with it as such, but you know. Piqued my curiosity, so to speak. Lanterns can go up in here with, like, the decorative stuff, I suppose. I probably have them somewhere else, like, in here, maybe, but... Uh, Diamond Trash Bag, thank you for the 39 months. Uh, Limbo Champion walks into a bar there disqualified. Very good, very good. Like what you've done there. Uh, we'll put the Wither Skeleton Skulls in here, because that's where some other mob drops and stuff went. I'm going to save the bottles of enchanting for now, just in case we need to repair stuff. 
because it's good for having like mending and whatnot in. Um, we'll stash the books in here since I have a decent supply of books at this stage and I don't expect I will need to worry too much about having Fortune or Infinity, which is the books that we got from those Witch Towers. Um, now, let's, um, let's establish a chest or something in here, maybe a barrel. Um, we've got some more bookshelves. But let's get a, um, a set of slabs so that we can make barrels. And we're going to create a couple of barrels here that we can just use to store like loose books and also bookshelves. That way we're able to use some of our levels here to generate books, but we don't have to worry as much about uh, where we're storing them constantly. Okay, backpack is looking clearer. We have this dorsal sapling that I'm pretty sure I was saving just in case the wood proved to be nice, but I think we'll just stash that in like modded wood types for now. And then I think with that there's like bamboo and some ceramics and stuff in here. And this haunting soul I think we already have one of. But I forget where I was stashing those. There we go. Yeah. Um, the little decorative things are kind of fun. They're both they're they're all from the graveyard, along with the skull piles and the the iron bars and everything. Um, and the dark iron we put in here, but I'm fairly certain we can use this to create other stuff we could make iron out of. Or we can make a brimwood shrub. That's kind of cool. And deep slate. Pillar trim. That's something we can take advantage of for the the outside of this. Let's take a quick look at what that looks like. Because that doesn't show up in the stone cutter, as far as I remember. So evidently that is something that we can... Oh, now you're talking. That's, that's interesting. That we could do something with. Perhaps not there, but like, if we want to use that as like a... A little ornament underneath the windows. Can you put a torch on that? No, it'd be really good if you could put a torch on that. Um, yeah, it kind of makes an interesting window ornament, doesn't it? We'll do something like that instead. Because, like, having it go up these pillars makes less sense because they've got that border up there. But if we want to do something like this, and then... Yeah, we'll get one more above the window there. We'll put it up there for now. But yeah, the, uh, the terrain on this side doesn't match the terrain on that side, so we'll have to get another one. Yeah, we'll see. Um, okay. Okay, bamboo can go away in, I guess, the organic stuff, wood types, whatever these bits and pieces are. But yeah, I wanted to look at the dark iron stuff because I assume if I hit R on this I get the recipes... So it turns into dark iron blocks. That's how you make dark iron. Right, okay, yeah. I can right-click on that to see what the recipes are. So that's how you make a coffin or a sarcophagus. There are fire braziers. There's the trapdoors and doors we've already found, and those look really good. I love the bars, especially for a, um, a roof ridge. There's an ossuary, and I still don't know what this does. I found one out in the wild, and I was kind of scared by it. But then the rest is just coffins. Okay, cool. So the graveyard has a few things going on, but the bars are really what I want to focus on because I think those are aesthetically what people like from iron bars when they use them for roof ridges, and often people end up retexturing iron bars so that they fit that that style, right? Um, but we're going to continue along the edge here with the Brimwood stripped logs. And then we'll end up doing something down there with... I don't know if we want to do it with planks or if we just want to create, like, a different... Um, I guess we could turn these into planks right for the stairs. Because I don't think these really fit with the log in quite the same way. Like that. Like, I imagine it would be fine if you looked at it from a distance, but I sort of wonder if there's another wood type that would go better. We'll leave them that way for now, because we've got four stairs and four logs, so the maths works out, even if I don't like the design as much. Hmm. 
Maybe I'll just learn to like it. Right, um, now we've got a bit of a clearer inventory. We can throw some of the stuff that I will need in here, and there's like an enchanting table that I picked up from, I think, one of the witch towers that we had. Um, we'll leave some of these in here for the moment while we work on the upper level of the manse. But yeah, we'll... Um, we'll get some, dr uh, some brimwood logs, and we'll start... Working on the upstairs floor. Pillar blocks like that, maybe we want to spend some time in modded more. I know I'd spend up in a, uh, an eternity detailing. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's um something to be said for the fact that vertical slab mods have existed for as long as people have wanted vertical slabs in this game, and yet somehow people don't all play modded, right? Like there's there's a certain aspect to modded where I feel like I would just spend way too much time working on small things, and having more choice actually means things take a lot longer. <laughs> At least as far as my experience goes. Ooh, that's a fun one. It actually generates logs sticking out of the ground as part of the tree. Very cool. I like that a lot. We're not going to worry too much about getting the magma logs this time around, because I've already use them for what I expect to use them for, but we know we can get some more if... Oh, that took down the rest of the tree, huh? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, we, I know we can get some more if we need them, so... I think we'll have a couple here naturally, just from... Uh, those trees being connected and chopping down as... the same entity. This is my problem with the chopping... mod is that, like, with the tree trunk getting smaller like that, occasionally you find yourself with, uh, less surface area to chop. What did that just drop for me? It was, it was showing up some crafting recipes that I don't recall having had before. But now I don't see them in here, so they must be crafting table recipes. Chopping Sunday, yeah, something like that. So what was it showing me? Oh, there are signs, I guess. Stackable logs is kind of fun. And Brimwood trapdoors. I guess because we had more planks than we've had before, potentially. That's kind of fun. The animated texture on a trapdoor is not something I expected I would like as much as that, but it's it's pretty cool. Right, we'll hop back up here, continue along here, and can't quite reach that far down. I don't get to use this feature of my keyboard often enough. If only I could do that with stripping these logs as well, but tragically I cannot. The other thing is this thing has an attack if you hold down right click, and so it's, uh, occasionally when I'm missing a log, it's starting to charge up that attack when I don't want it to, which is pretty funny. Sorry if it's a little distracting, though. It's getting there. We need more framing elements, obviously, and I need to figure out whether I'm going to do, like, windows and stuff like that, but... 
yeah, there's some more some more fun stuff we can do with this. So I want to make these towers taller so they don't look wonky when I put roofs on them. Eventually. I think about that will do. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's looking all right. We will need a lot more of these, though. I can still use the magma logs in here if I don't mind losing the magma texture when we strip the log. But as long as those ones on the front stay because they look like windows, that's really what I wanted from this. Creepy mansion. Yeah, we need more, like, overhangs and big, like, framed windows is the idea. I think we'll turn these into full six-sided stripped wood blocks just to make sure that that doesn't show the end texture there. And then I guess the frame of this window will want to be one higher so that we can put them up here as well. Like that. I don't know if I would want it in vanilla all of the time, but having the extra jump boost and the double jump that I have makes it so much easier to get up onto the the higher parts of a build <laughs> when you can just like parkour platform your way up to your own build. Feels quite nice. So yeah, I'm thinking up here if we want to do something like this. The problem is they are they're very directional. If we do something like that. I wonder if it might look better. Or at least more ornate and interesting. If we do those. And then one in the middle and then. On the sides there. We end up with blocks like that supporting the roof line. I wonder if the windows need to be one block taller or if I've just made the uh, top part of the where the roof is too tall. We'll go down here instead. Try that. Temp blocks in here so that we can put these on the sides. You can actually walk between those as well, which is fun. Walk from the hitbox of one to the other without falling. Like this. And then the... Uh... I'm going to use spruce wood temporarily. We're not going to use spruce wood for the... the roof, I imagine. But like, we want like a roof framing block. They're having trouble showing up against that is the only thing. But I think if we layer in enough detail there, I think that'll actually be quite nice. And the height of the window seems okay. What would I prefer, longer reach or double jump? Honestly, I don't use longer reach all that much. Like, I'm fine reaching five blocks. It seems like a comfortable distance to reach. Yeah, you really can't see the fact that there are, like, iron brackets up there until you look a little closer. So I wonder if maybe we want to do those out of, like, some of the other... Let's let's do that on the other side with a different material. 
and then maybe we can work the iron brackets into something that has a lighter contrast behind it. Like, the deep slate bricks are actually fairly light in comparison to this. Like, this has a lot more darker stuff in it, whereas this has stronger highlights. So I wonder if maybe some of the... Uh... Where did I find those before? I didn't leave them in my backpack, so... These, the flagpoles. What if these flagpoles work the same sort of way? We'll do that on the opposite side so we can compare the two. So we'll need a bit more brimwood anyway. This is White Run at Night from Skyrim. Huh, fun. Yeah, I really like these logs. I think this is one of the more uh, cool-looking wood types that I've found exploring the nether. This is brimwood from uh, Regions Unexplored, if anyone is curious. Oh, we got it. Nice. And obviously it doesn't remove these blocks because it doesn't consider them part of the tree. Didn't lose any down there. No. Okay, cool. Ow. So this is going to be here. Although I guess, no, those are like halfway out from the block. So you'd have to put like a, a slab on top of those anyway. You can't. Because the flagpoles actually stretch out from like halfway into the next block up. But they have a hitbox. So I couldn't like, I couldn't put a slab like in the same block space here. Like, it won't let me do that now. It occupies, like, technically speaking, two blocks. Although it allows a slab in the space below it, just not the space above it. So that actually works like the opposite of how I expected it to. That's a little strange. Wonder how those Brimwood saplings would grow on a single floating dirt block? Hmm, worth trying. So yeah, if there's any any other like brackets like this that we could use, then maybe we can give it a try. But we could also just layer in another type of wood near the top here, if we wanted to, just to create a bit more contrast there. We could make it like a, a lighter wood gradient, and so it's like darker into lighter. But I don't know what I would want to mix in with the stripped brimwood. Then again, a lot of strip logs, it evens out the texture because the strip wood texture is the same across a lot of different wood types. So it's not like mixing different types of regular logs where the texture is often remarkably different. Stripped wood is the great unifier. The blocks uh, for whip and sausage have used in the arches. Yeah, what are these? And do they come in different materials? Spruce supports. Let's go for support. Okay, so those come in a variety of different... We could use mangrove if we wanted to, I guess. They're not there for, like, all the different types of 
uh, wood because there's so many different modded wood types that were added here. But like if we wanted to stick with the red motif a little bit more, we could always use mangrove for that. I didn't require finding mangrove wood, of course, but we've got a biome compass that t uh, tells us where those are, so we wouldn't really have a hard time doing that. We'll give it a try. Let's let's go looking for a mangrove. We'll drop all of this wood in the backpack for now. Oh, this is the wrong compass. We're uh, looking at structures, not biomes. Swap that for this. Mangrove swamp. About 4,000 blocks away to the east. I've been out that way. Well, I have. I wonder what's out in that direction that I've already found. Magnolia Woodland, Temperate Grove, Pine Tiger, Grassy Beach. Be around here somewhere, probably. There's a couple of villages out there, but... Don't know what I found in terms of, like, waystones that could take us there. Does Pack have a frame version of some of those nice items which allow it to accept other materials? I don't know. There doesn't seem to be one for the supports that we were just looking at. Let's hop around a few waystones here and see if we uh, come across anything that's out in that direction. Probably not this one. Yeah, that's further away. That's even further away. That's even further, even further away. That's about the same. Oh, yeah, this one. Well, that's slightly closer. In the middle of a village where the iron golems could kill me. Where are we? Oh, yeah, so we're about the sort of midpoint of that triangle. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll keep going. We'll go from here. That can be a good start. Have I explored some of these chests? There's a beehive on a stick. That's the uh, Minecraft Dungeons uh, accessory, right? I think Sausage had one of those when I saw him in a... A previous occasion. Really getting our jump on here. That's a cool structure. I think we've seen one of those before, like a little expanded uh, pillager watchtower. Pillager outpost. I always call them watchtowers for some reason, even though that's not really the name of the structure, strictly speaking. Oh, there's a little raft that we can alight on for a second. Still need to explore one of these um, expanded ocean monuments as well at some stage soon. Oh, <laughs> some jellyfish falling from the sky. The flying squid once again represented in Minecraft. Another little uh, mine cells entrance. It's a villager lighthouse. Oh, is that what it is? Nice. Alright, so, yeah, Badlands, Savannah, this definitely looks like the t the kind of terrain that we would find a mangrove swamp adjacent to, so hopefully a little mangrove and we can get that started. Having a little more red wood will definitely be helpful. There's like a trail of mangrove here, actually, that's kind of fun. I guess we can just grab some, like, proper ghouls and stuff. What is this? Hello? Oh, this is one of those, like, overgrown structures. The bog iron and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. These little mangrove wetlands biomes. Well, let's, um... Don't have any bone meal on me, really. Um, and no bones. 
unfortunate. But yeah, maybe we can grab some proper gules. Or at least maybe grab some leaves. Do I have shears? I don't really have any shears either, do I? Should really start keeping some of that stuff in my um backpack here. I guess I've got some some iron. So we can make a couple of shears. Just get a few leaves and then chop down a tree and we'll be good, right? Because even if this thing doesn't drop too many proper gules, we can always farm the uh, proper gules from a set of leaves if we have the bone meal. So that works out fine. We got a couple anyway, so that's that's all right. That's that's not too bad. Uh, let's get back to that village with the waystone. It wasn't too far away. I used up my fireworks in order to get out of here. Look at the giraffes. Not quite tall enough, but I think they're uh, a cool mob nonetheless. Lucy, thanks so much for the 50 months. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome back. There's an efficient way to chop mangrove. Sure was. That modded Minecraft life. R.I.P. whatever that was that just fell down, except I think it survived, because that might have just been it spawning in instead of... Just, like, straight up dying. Oh, ouch. Trying to find a way of, like, skimming off the ground here to gain a little extra height with the elytra, because I don't have the firework rockets. And I don't have the type of wings that let me fly without firework rockets, so... Just doing a little, uh... Hop maneuver here. <laughs> Which doesn't look like it's going to work out for very long, unfortunately, but that's why I brought a boat. One of the most annoying trees to chop and it just went plop, yeah. That is, I suppose, an advantage of having tree chopping mods like this. Confusing at first, but viable later. MC Bella, good morning slash afternoon to you. It is the early afternoon here. We're streaming a little earlier than usual, but I thought I would get some stuff done sooner rather than later because I didn't really have much I wanted to do in like an hour before I'd normally start the stream anyway. First time checking out Fancy SMP Modded is Wild. It sure is. There's so much stuff in this. And uh, as usual with Modded Minecraft, it's about finding the stuff that you actually care about, which is sometimes tricky. And then sometimes there's just, like, villages floating in the sky that you can't help but go and investigate. It's a ton of fish and, uh, yeah, occasional massive pirate ships. <laughs> I think this is the problem I always have with modded is that like a lot of the time because there are very talented builders out there in the community and a lot of them are creating mods that add content like this. They make something that's honestly better and more detailed than a lot of players might make and it sort of puts you off actually building anything sometimes because of the sheer amount of talent that's gone into that stuff. Like you really have to have the mindset of like, you know, can I improve upon this? Can I match this? Do I just want to build somewhere away from it? Like, I know you want to avoid comparison and whatnot, but I think a lot of the vanilla Minecraft structures do a great job of not being, like, intimidating to builders and have people not want to, like, change things or destroy the structure or start stuff up. Whenever anybody argues that Mojang should add more detailed and better looking structures, I kind of think, well, if they do that, then there's less incentive for the player to build because their world is already that detailed. But then some people might get inspiration from that versus some people just finding it, like, I don't know, discouraging. So I guess it's a matter of your mindset, right? The sun is round, yeah. <laughs> A lot of stuff in this is retextured, including apparently the sun. 
We'll make a quick stop on this volcanic isle. I don't know if this is where the village was. There looks like this little temple structure there. I don't know if that has a waystone or not, but mostly I just want to sleep. Before any of the... Uh, mobs come out. Yes, the moon also round. Do you have a waystone? It's this little, like, island farmstead with melons and hay bales and glowberries, apparently. Plus tiny, tiny jungle temple. Is this just a village house? Oh, it's a little hay store. That's kind of nice. And then the adorable cows! Mm. I love the cows so much. I think we're headed for, um... This village here, I think that was the one where I had the waystone, right? So we're heading north and a little bit east. We'll take off from this while well, we've still got the momentum. There we go. Now we're flying. Is this a mod pack? Yes, this is very much a mod pack. Um, Fantasy Minecraft Fabric, if you want to look it up. If you check out the VODs at Pixel VODs on YouTube, then there is uh, a link to the mod pack in the description of all of those. Oh, a little mushroom. Kind of odd to see those here, but you never know. There's there's many uh, additions that they've made to villages and stuff like that. Right, so the mangrove. We can turn this all into planks. And obviously there's a lot of furniture and stuff that we can make out of them. So some of those might even work as additions but what we wanted is mangrove supports which is just like a little r shape in the crafting table and i wanted to see maybe we'll do it again side by side with the uh the bracketed stuff over there i wanted to see if this makes more sense do it like that. See, I really like the wrought iron, like, torch bracket style thing. This sort of says more like barn to me. But I don't know. There's like mangrove seats and shelves and stuff that we could use to connect some of it. <laughs> you want a mangrove coffin, chat? We can make a mangrove coffin. Um, tables and whatnot. Corner trim. That's a fun one. So that's like an L-shape like that. What's this look like? Ooh, now... Now then. Looks a little fancier than this, doesn't it? The question is, does it like... Does it connect? Is it like a stair block or... That almost feels, like, too fancy, though. I don't know. If we wanted to have it alternate or something like this. There's, like, some stuff you could do like that. I just don't know if the mangrove works, really. You 
Yeah, now that we have the mangrove, I think it's quite a high contrast. Like, part of me wants to find more stuff that works with this dark iron palette. Like, if we ended up using blackstone. Maybe we can create a different kind of contrast with the wood, but maybe... If we put some stuff like this around it. I want to use the stone cutter for this, ideally. We'll put those back in the bundle. We'll put the ores back in here. That's regular diamond or not deep slate diamond, which is why it's not stacking. Um... That's the other thing is, does Blackstone have more of the, um, ancient carved Blackstone? Fun. Does it have any more of the, um, alternate blocks the way, uh, yeah, Blackstone pillar trim. Stuff like this. This is what I'm kind of curious about. And there's Blackstone corner trim there, so. Yeah, I wonder if maybe we can do some stuff like that. And that, those don't have recipes in the stone cutter, so they're a little more unusual. Do we go like this? Does that then make the iron wrought stuff? It doesn't really stand out so much. It's cool that it's there, but I think we need to put it in a place where it's more visible than contrasted against that wood type. Thank you for the 26, Maybonix. Welcome back. Yeah, like, can we get a crafting table on this? And make some of the... There's also withered blackstone that looks a little different. But I thought... don't know if there's a way we can... Bygone nether. We can look for that, maybe. Because it doesn't seem like there's a way we can craft... Withered blackstone. It looks like it's just a... um. Oh, needs netherite tool? Interesting. <laughs> okay. Or well, maybe we can upgrade one of our pickaxes if we need to mine that later. But, um, yeah, we need some regular blackstone, I think, in order to make the blackstone corner trims. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Even though it's got a different texture, it seems to be, like, crafted out of ordinary blackstone. If we did something like this. That's closer to that kind of monolithic style that we want. And then if we can make blackstone pillar sections. Let's get a crafting table back in here. This is like that, right? I think these are meant to go underneath that corner trim block. Hang on. Let me up there. It's meant to go like that. Oh, hang on. That was unusual. Yeah, like actually attaches to the side of the block. That's fun. So yeah, we can't we can't place it there unless we have a supporting block. But this I think that's closer to what we want for roof supports. I kind of want something to go in between those two, like a block to go there. But that's so detailed, but I kind of like it at the same time, you know? I think that plus, like, a big overhang and then, like, the 
dark iron bars on top as a roof line ornament. I think that's going to look... That's going to look cool. It's going to look foreboding. We want it to bode. Enoila, thanks so much for gifting five subs out to the community. So kind of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's turn this mangrove into a crafting table because I'm clearly not using it for uh, the design element here. I think it's just a different shade of red than what I really want. Um, so in that case, we can turn more corner trims into supporting sections here. We'll obviously do them like on the other corners as well. So, so we can come out like that. But then we want one of those in the middle, but underneath that first, we want to have that. And then this, right? Then again, this is all actually one block too high. So I kind of goofed that one up, but we want it to be there and here. The only problem with having this like row of trap doors down here now is that the uh, blocks that fall end up getting caught on there. Midnight Iris, thank you so much for the 12 months. Everyone spam the word nerd in the chat, please. Thank you so much for the full year supporting the channel. Enjoy that nerd sub badge and welcome to the nerd herd. Ow, I just hit my head. <laughs> Real bad, actually. Yeah, and on here we can put the pillar trims on the blocks below. Perfect. We'll make some more of these corner trims because I think those are those are it. Those are what we wanted. They even have like a little kind of pillar texture on the back there. Wondering how this is. Oh right, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've, I've goofed up the measurements on this side. That's fine. That's fine. I think we'll let these logs go all the way to the roof line when we eventually make the roof line. I'm not sure if we want that to be made out of blackstone or if that feels too dark now. No worries, Ozzy. Have a good one. Catch you later. We'll pop this here and then there. Honestly, yeah, I think blackstone is it. it. means we only need to go to the nether and get some more blackstone, but it's got that castle vibe, which I think the top floor of this really wanted. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if we want some more of these window blocks with the alternating, like, stained glass to go on the upstairs floor as well, potentially. The other question is, is there a way we can... We can't really rotate these candle holders any way other than... Like four cardinals, right? So we can't end up having them be like upside down on a block somehow. Because I feel like those would make really interesting like wrought iron window frames if we could 
do that, but I don't think it will really let me. We'll have the logs go all the way to the roof like that. Just for the support. I think that central window needs to be taller. Like at least four by three. I think five by three might look out of proportion. Like it would need to be wider. But I think 4x3 is good. And we'll make like a pointed roof arch over the top of this that can kind of mirror what's going on down there. So we can kind of slope upwards in the center. Break with the roof line a little bit here. More blackstone bricks needed for that. Then, yeah, it'll go... ...out like this. That kind of thing, but if anything, we probably want it to be steeper. Maybe like one and a half blocks at a time. So we'll need more blackstone bricks. Okay, that's a blackstone cluster because this is not... The way we do this, where's the stone cutter gone? There we go. Polished black stone bricks, there we go. Hey Ginger, welcome in. Started a little earlier today, so uh, sorry if that threw you off. <laughs> right, yeah, we'll definitely need to get more black stone. Because I've got cobbled blackstone, which we can smelt. We have some cracked, polished blackstone that we can maybe use. But, um, yeah, then we can maybe do some stuff with blackstone walls and then the dark iron bars across the top there. I think that'll, that'll be a nice aesthetic. That'll be interesting. Need to figure out windows in these lower areas. Window frames. I think we really need to work on having more ornate window frames. But then I wonder if like a hip roof with a gable works well here. Like we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we can come up with. I definitely think the um Corner trims work well here, though. I think that's a really great... Really great addition to this. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. And, you know, I'm wondering if maybe it would be beneficial to pull out the logs of the top floor by a block and have this trapdoor run underneath instead of along, just to give it more depth. I don't know. I'm I'm still I'm still mulling that one over. Gonna go grab breakfast in a moment. Hey, no worries. 
We're just chilling here. I guess the um, deep slate corner trim could also work well there instead of this... Um, this pillar trim, right? Like, if we end up using the pillar trim like that, then the cobbled deep slate can be turned into corner trim in the same way blackstone can. Like, if we do this... Or does that need to be deep slate bricks in order to do that? Or even polished deep slate. Like, I don't know what the material requirements are, or even if we can do it. Well, apparently we can't. Hang on. What is deep slate called? Oh, it's smooth deep slate. It's silk touched deep slate. Which I'm sure I have some of in here somewhere. Um, well, maybe I don't. Maybe we've used a lot of it or not silk touched it. So we can smelt some. That's fine. We'll put the mangrove stuff away for now because that's clearly a non-starter. But I like the idea and at least clued us into the fact that this corner trim stuff exists. So maybe we'll look into that color palette another time. A recipe that actually uses Silk Touch Deep Slate? I know. Modded Minecraft, am I right? The possibilities. I sort of wish these candle holders had ways of connecting in the same way that iron bars do. Obviously that's a little far-fetched considering what they are intended for, but... You can do some really versatile stuff with the iron bars. Ow. Yeah, if we do this. And then above these arches. Could we even replace the stairs with that? And have it be like so? I feel that it doesn't quite work for this space. But if we leave the stairs in there and use it as like a little single ornament in the center. I think that's got a bit of visual interest to it. If we change up the texture of the blocks around it, I think it'll really stand out better. I get the idea that these are really supposed to be like... If you do pillars like this, you can even have them, like, side by side with each other, you know? So what's going on here? Corrupted deep slate corner? It's like, bleh. <laughs> Texture not found. 404. And these we can't place... Oh, wait, you can. Oh. That's interesting. Huh. It's like a more ornate stair block. It doesn't have, like, corner connections the way stairs do. Interesting. Interesting. Alright, lots to think about. Lots to think about. But I think we need to go and gather more blackstone, which we'll need to go to the nether for. Unless, weren't those volcanic islands that we were just at kind of made of blackstone? Like, if we find one of those, we could just strip it in the overworld and not have to worry about going to the nether and finding it amongst all of the... Uh, 
unusual nether biomes. Like, where were we? Out here, in the ocean, not there. Here, this. Tropical jungle. That, I think, is Blackstone. And this here might be Blackstone too. I wonder if there's one closer to where we're at right now. If we know the biome name, we can look it up. Tropical jungle. 1300 blocks. That sounds like the one we found out there, and it's pointing in that direction. So let's warp there using the waystone. I think it was this one? No. It was that one. Yes, that is Blackstone. Okay, great. So yeah, we'll head out to an area where there aren't iron golems trying to kill me, and... Do a little bit of chopping. There's a ton of uh, basalt here as well. I'm kind of wondering if the basalt can be used for anything. Anything more. Like if basalt has... That's got brick walls... Stalactites, polished basalt bricks, but not all of the ornate, like, corner pieces and stuff that we had before, so we can maybe consider using it, but obviously we're here primarily for the blackstone, and we're going to silk touch this because cobbled blackstone is a thing in this mod pack, apparently. Could really use a beacon for this, but I don't think we need to gather a ton of it. Yeah, I think this is working for me. I think it's uh, starting to come together. If we remove this top layer that has all the basalt and stuff in it, then we get a decent amount of blackstone in the layer underneath. There's deep slate copper ore amongst all of this on the surface. These mod packs, they spit on vanilla terrain generation. Yeah, so we have this long, like, strand here of just pure blackstone that we can gather if we want to. We've already got, like, Three and uh, like two and a quarter, two, two and three quarter stacks. A villager that lives on a blackstone island next to a jungle temple. Just a uh, Robinson Crusoe type out here. For a moment, you said mud packs. Ah, oh, yes, the spa treatment of taking some time away from vanilla Minecraft. I do really like this volcanic island kind of biome, though. Like, I can see myself building something like this in vanilla. That and the screenshot I used, I think, on Twitter today for going live. Where there's a bunch of, like, individual rocks out there in the ocean with trees and moss growing on them and stuff. Like, I kind of want to build something like that. Maybe near the pirate cove near my, like, starter base area and survival guide.
Hey, what's up, Dan? Welcome in. We started a little early today because, uh... I was thinking of starting at 1, but then I had basically nothing to do between 12 and 1, so I thought, yeah, I'll go live early. We'll get on Fantasy Minecraft, we'll do a little bit of mining. Gonna be returning to Elden Ring to hopefully finish the Arbalest playthrough a little bit later as well. And then on Tuesday, after the Minecraft stream, we'll be starting the Seamless Co-op playthrough with Zloy XP, where we run the Astrologer's stuff, go to the DLC and attempt to get every sorcery in the game, which is going to be a really fun run, because it'll be Zloy's first time in the DLC, my first time using some of the spells, because when my first run through the DLC of that game was not spellcasting heavy, it was basically the opposite, I was a melee only character. So we'll see how we get on there. Honestly, if this island is going to be our blackstone source, like if we dig down here, do we get a layer of blackstone underneath this? Well, there's actually regular stone there, but there's some blackstone below that. Yeah, I'm kind of curious if we end up getting more more blackstone like we have around the outside there. But it seems like it's mostly towards the edges of the island instead of generating just as a flat layer underneath. Um, either way, we could... We could always set up a waystone here since I have a couple in my... Let's put that here and then call this... Blackstone Island. There we go. So now we can just hop back and forth between that and RPG Town. Nice and easily. Is the jumping a mod? Yes. I have uh, rabbit boots, these bunny hoppers, which automatically give me a uh, jump boost 2 effect. But then there's also a cloud in a bottle accessory that works like Elytra. Gives me a double jump. Or, and it works like Elytra. Works like Terraria. And then combines with Elytra. Uh, so I get a double jump and then I float a little bit because... Uh, the same action as the double jump opens up my elytra wings. So I can now sort of hop up there and float a lot more easily than I could in in vanilla. I also want to find out what these blackstone clusters do, but evidently we are still able to make polished blackstone like that. Right. Let's get some sleep real quick. Elden Ring looks like a game you'd want to aim for 100%. Yeah, my current project is playing through that game using every weapon in alphabetical order. So we start a fresh character with every playthrough and we take that weapon all the way to end game and we beat the game with it, is is the goal. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of fun to be had in, in Elden Ring. It's a really, really fun game. And the whoopee cushion I have um, consigned to a chest down there only to be uh, removed in times of dire importance. <laughs> Let's put some more of the uh, brim wood up here to fill out this cavity up here. That'll do for a start. Take a quick look in here. That's kind of awkward looking because we didn't have enough blackstone bricks to finish. But yeah, once we get back up here, this central ridge can be like that. And then we need the slabs back, don't we? I think I put them in the chest down there, but we need to make more, so let's just put them through the stone cutter. There we go. So that's 
Yeah, that's a, a full block there. This has slabs over top, so that's block and a half. This has slabs on that side? Or is that a double slab now? Yeah, okay, cool. So that that evens out the uh, the frame. Yeah, I suppose the question is, do we then do this? Open that out for one more log. And have the inside of that, like, match up. Yeah, I think we need to. I think it needs to match the... Uh, angle of the roof. I guess that's like that, right? And then this is like an extra slab like that. question is do we now raise that up by one because it overhangs like this no I think it works for the the height of the roof we just need to make sure that we carry on the line of the roof back this way I guess we can fill this in if we really want to you filled in with whatever material. I'm just not sure what I'm doing on the inside of these yet. Let's grab more blackstone out of here. We definitely need to have more, like, inset windows here, I think. We'll do gable end frames above this, too, I think. Well, that's going to change up how we're using these, so... Hmm... We'll see. Do you ever get tired of the double jump? I know I do sometimes. I mean, I can always switch it off if I get tired of it. And there's some cases where it feels inconvenient, but I think it's outweighed by how useful it feels the rest of the time to me. What are we working on today? Uh, working on this mansion that I've had going in this fancy Minecraft SMP for a little while. A little bit of modded Minecraft building, which is not usually my forte, but we're getting there. We're making it happen. See, the difference here is that on the sides, this reaches a different roof pitch because...
that these sections here are only five blocks wide, not seven, like the middle there. So... I think we can work with that, but we'll have to see how that pans out. Ow. Let's drop back onto Sausage's house to take a quick look. I think that's going okay so far. Again, we can texture the Blackstone roof a little later. But then this is going to come out like this. Can't get to the backpack from the stone cutter. Do I know of Lorna Shaw? I know of them, I've not heard any of their music. The only reason I think I know of them is because the singer from Lorna Shaw is um, the one doing those experiments where they, like, stick a camera down his throat when he's, like, doing some of the screams. So they can see what happens to the throat when people do that stuff. Like, that's the, uh, <laughs> the only context I have for their videos. Oh, that's also a block too low. So that's probably going to have to come up by a slab towards the end here if we actually want it to be part of this, like, roof ridge. But I think I want to have it go across the top here still. And this might not even be the top of the the roof ridge, it's just the top at the front, but there might actually be more depth to it considering that the rest of the house is wider than this. But like, from the front here... That's working for me. I think maybe we can also put these iron bars on any of the roof sections that allow for them to just sit on top like that. Like if we do one of these. Yeah. Then in the center here, I do want to have a, uh, a window, so we'll cut, I guess, one, two, three, four, like here. Yeah. Which is interesting, because this is going to have a taller ridge than the one down here, but that I think leaves room for it to come out and decorate like this. Made a comparison that they're the Mozart of metal, it kind of sticks. Nice. Yeah, it's been a while since I got into a ton of new, like, <laughs> I was going to say new metal, but then that's like a different, <laughs> that's a that's a genre. Um, like a, a ton of emerging metal acts or like recent metal acts i think uh, sleep token is probably my most recent band that i've really gotten into that i've found in recent memory yeah i don't take enough time to listen to new music these days so i should really get more active in that I wonder if we drop this down to, like, a a slab there. And then have the window build up from the frame here. I wonder if that's going to look good. Hey, Ollie, what's up? Welcome in. I'm working on my manse.
Yeah, I like I like having windows in there. I don't know about the slab thing though. We'll see if we end up putting windows in the uh, the section below this as well. But I want more of the the stained glass that we're using in the floor level windows, which I think if I type window in here, it's this one. No, that's the heart pattern one. It's this one. So we need red stained glass, black, and then yellow as well. And I only have a little bit of each, but I think I've got enough black dye, or at least ink sacks now, that I should be able to make some more black stained glass. Why am I dressed like Sauron? Because I'm the necromancer. I've even got the eye of Sauron, look. There he is. The great eye. <laughs> With his, like, wacky name tag. <laughs> Sauriffs. Yeah, I've been watching Rings of Power, and Sauron actually has a couple of costume changes. So it turns out Sauron can look like anything. Rocket League looking fella. You know all about Rocket League, wouldn't you, Ollie? I've I've seen you log in. I've seen your Steam playing time. So yeah, the Dread Glare occasionally spontaneously combusts, but that's fine. We love him. Every day I log in, I'm procrastinating. Yeah. Uh, let's take a quick look at the dark iron trapdoors and see if... Yeah, those work like regular iron trapdoors where I think they have to be activated by redstone. Which is kind of awkward because I really wanted to use them for like... Um, window shutters or something, but they'd have to have redstone power behind them somewhere. Enjoying the show like I did last season. Yeah, I think it was great. Like, I think it's 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 a good show. I'm not one of those people who's going to be like, oh, they're spitting on Tolkien's legacy. I'm like, it, it's a television show. Who cares? Like, the books are still the books. Like, if you like them that much, then great. Well, that's going to be a problem, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> Who's done that? Um, yeah. Yeah, so if we frame this a little bit more, it can be a little deeper if it wants to be, you know. Yeah, it looks kind of cool right now because uh, the sky behind it means that you don't see as much of the color, but I think it's going to look extra good once we've got something behind that. And I want to do something more ornamental around here with these, like, blackstone corner pieces that we were able to make, which I don't have any of right here right now. Put some of this away. But yeah, we could even work in some of the the stained glass that we've got. Alternative, I guess, is if we do this. Oh, it connects. That's the the problem with the bars is they work more like glass panes, right? So I was wondering if we could put something along the the bottom of here that would like act like a little shelf but stay separate. Like, it doesn't look too bad, I suppose, if you have it like that. Like, you can't really see it connecting because of how dark the material is. So I guess we could do that. It doesn't look t like... You, you don't really see it, do you? Like, from from ground level or from a distance there. So I think that's quite good. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's totally fine. And yeah, we need to do more stuff with chains aesthetically here anyway, but... In time. All in good time. 
Where did I put that crafting table? I just keep leaving them around places. Like the bars on top of the roof? Yeah, those dark iron bars I think are really great. I think those are... Those are going to be a... A welcome addition to this whole situation. I'm doing my usual thing of like just doing the front of a build instead of building everything up like section by section but I think once I've got an idea of the materials I want to use by roughing this out then we'll be able to build the rest of it nicer in theory. Just wish I hadn't gone with such a noisy block for the rest of this but I think we just need to go and Silk touch some deep slate and use the brick as an accent instead of using it as a a full building block. I want to do that before I make the uh, the rest of the build. So we'll have a heavy mining day on this uh, this here server. Is the copper fence out front aging or is it pre-aged and waxed? It's aging. I'm just letting it age and then we'll strip it with an axe if we want to do more with it later. I suppose the next question is, do we want to have the same window pattern here? I feel like the sun pattern window and the heart pattern window don't really give me, like, necromancer vibes. <laughs> um, is there anything else that we can do glass-wise? There's, there's, like, framed glass panes that are, like, red and black, right? So... There's, like, framed quartz which is an interesting concept. So you get quartz glass from smelting it. You mix that with syncinocyte, and this is all used in those better nether structures. So I guess we can give that a go. This is still smelting regular glass for us. Let's take that off the boil. And let's cook us up some of this. And we'll need some window type things for an identical window on the other side, most likely. Yeah, this quartz glass is going to be a fun one. I also like the fact that it's borderless, right? So you can keep the vanilla glass texture whilst also making a much clearer, but still, still textured, right? This all looks like a cloud. Cool breaking sound, too. Although that might just be the glass breaking sound. I don't think I've really broken much glass. Sincinocyte, I'm pretty sure we have some of... Yeah, from the nether. So we can smelt that into ingots. Let's get another furnace down. I assume this just smelts in the normal way. There might be a way to double it or something, but I've not really looked into ore doubling in this pack. Wait a second, we need some sunglasses. <laughs> Beach glasses. A monocle. <gasps> a grey stained glass pane in a stone cutter gets you a monocle. That's incredible. That's really funny. So what is a spectre bound spyglass? Gallosphere. Interesting. I wonder if it does something similar to this mod that I would make if I knew how to make mods. Or like a data pack, if you could do this with data packs. But I had this idea a while back. I'm going to make this black, which I assume is just dye, right? Yeah, cool. Um, I had this idea a while back of um, tying a spyglass to a specific spot like if there was like something like a lodestone that you could attune a spyglass to and you could use that as like a vantage point so that when you look through the spyglass you were looking at your build from a distance 
instead of having to use like the F4 free cam or always like fly away to look at a specific spot. I think it'd be such an interesting tool for builders to have. If you could... There we go. Black framed... Oh, wait a second. You need to make it into framed quartz and then dye it so the full blocks can't be made into the framed one. That's a little awkward. And you can't undye it, I guess. Okay, well, now we know. Now we know. We can still make tons of this stuff, so it's not a problem. Just a shame it doesn't quite work the same way stained glass does, but... So we turn this into frames, and then we dye those individually. So, yeah, you're kind of getting a a one-to-one -one ratio kind of thing there. Uh, Charming TCO, thank you for the raid. Welcome in. Hope you're all having a good one. We are playing on the Fantasy Minecraft SMP with some good friends. And right now, I am working on my mansion house. Which is getting a fancy framed window, and I'm trying to decide whether I like this or not. I think I like it more once it's got more shape around it. But it definitely doesn't feel as dark and foreboding as the one up there. I think the frame is just too bright, so it feels maybe a little too uh, too steampunky. Really cool idea, and this this would work really nicely in like a um, like an East Asian inspired build, right? Like traditional, like classical Chinese or Japanese architecture could really benefit from frames like that, but I don't think it's working in this context. I think the other type of stained glass that we've made will have to do. Just because it's got a darker frame to it, like it looks, I think, a little cooler. Like this. Yeah, I think that's gonna that's gonna work out. Maybe need something behind it. I think it's just that it's it's too bright, like the the gold frame around everything. It just doesn't doesn't quite do it for me. These builds look sick. Yeah, a lot of people in the town here especially have made some really amazing looking stuff. Like Whip and Pearl live here, Mythical Sausage lives here. Uh, that's Scott's house, that's Jimmy's house, which I'm pretty sure Sausage helped to design. Not sure who lives in this one with the green roof. There's a few folks on here who I haven't really run into much. But they seem to be very keen on farming, which is cool. Interesting door as well, it's a three tall jungle door, it's kind of nice. Um, yeah, I think Sausage has built a couple of other things around town, like I have a feeling that this forge building here is a Sausage build. Uh, Flip's working on like a vineyard kind of thing out back. This is my creepy outskirts of town Adam's family mansion. Um, yeah, it's it's fun to goof around with some of these. So yeah, this framed glass I think we will stash away for now. Like I don't think I'm going to be using that all that much, but. You never know. It, it could it could pop up and be useful somewhere else. In the meantime, we've got the Sincinocyte in case that's useful for anything else. But for the moment, I'll pop it back in the precious resources. And yeah, the rest of this glass can go in there. That's all burning down. Okay, so yeah, I guess we continue with the... Blackstone up there. We continue making ourselves some black stained glass. And grab these back so that we can make more of these framed window blocks. Finish up this guy. Figure out the framing elements for that. Can, can we please... There we go. This one seems to have trouble connecting for some reason. Like every so often if you don't build it in exactly the right way, it kind of makes some dodgy connections until you correct it. 
But then, yeah, we can uh, use the remaining window blocks that we've got here to make an identical window on the opposite side. We need some framing stuff around here. I really want to get some more smooth, deep slates. So we'll stash the glass in here for the moment. We'll put the rest of our building blocks in here. We'll stash the shears. Put the crafting table away. And yeah, we'll just head down to deep slate level and do some... Like, strip mining, basically. Yeah, I agree that Sausage's build style works really well for, like, the fantasy RPG town kind of environment that we've set up for ourselves, which is one of the reasons, I think, that people decided on that as a style. Somewhere around here, I'm pretty sure there is our... Like, our typical way down to Deep Slate that I've always taken, but... I guess we'll squeeze through here. I do like it now I can fly through some of these caves. And this... Yeah, this is Deep Slate territory. Grab a little bit of tough as we go. These are infested caves, but that's not a concern for me because I have a silk touch pickaxe. <laughs> Although it may mean infested in the sense of uh, spiders instead of silverfish, but it could mean both. For all I know, it could mean both. Arthropods of all kinds are welcome down here, apparently. I figure I'll staircase down, because I might as well get myself some precious re resources while I'm at it. We can find some diamonds or some redstone or something. I think that big stretch of lava that you can see on the minimap is where I've been before. There's a big, long, wide lava river underground in some of these areas. That is, ironically, not diamonds. And we're just above a little lava lake here, but... Hopping out over the top of it. We have rhyolites down here as well. Got a couple of stacks. If I had to pick two things or reasons that always keep me coming back to Minecraft, what would those two be? Um, the fact that it's constantly updated, even though the game itself was relatively cheap, you get free updates every, like, year or so. Excuse me. And the other thing is just the sheer amount of creativity on display. Like, you can build anything you can imagine, more or less. There are some limitations to building, obviously, but I think the limitations are easily overcome. You can think of creative solutions to any limitation. And so the sandbox environment of it really appeals to me. I guess if I had to pick a third thing, it'd be the um, community being so strong. The fact that there's always people interested in watching Minecraft, there's always people playing Minecraft. 
And a lot of those people are so creative, it's just kind of inspiring to be around, you know? We're sort of branch mining here more than strip mining, but gathering a lot of deep slate either way is the goal, and stumbling upon some precious resources might be fun, but is not really the, uh, the be-all, end-all of this trip. I'm also really curious to see where you can find that withered deep slate block, or, or was it withered, withered something? Was it withered blackstone? Yeah, withered blackstone. So we might look for something that's in uh, bygone nether at some stage to see if we can get hold of that, because that looks like a really fun block. Even if you've played a million times, every new map is a whole new adventure as if you've never been here before. Yeah, and, and in a Minecraft world seed, there is enough exploration you could do to last, like, a lifetime. You know, it takes people years and years to walk to the far lands in, like, beta versions of Minecraft. And the world has expanded, like, several times over since then. So you could theoretically explore a single Minecraft world forever if you felt like moving on, but it's also really fun to start from scratch and see what a new world brings you. When to do the dishes, what did you miss? Well, I don't know when you left, but we've really just been building and now we're resource gathering. That's kind of the, the general vibe here. Gonna bundle up some of these ore blocks and mob drops and stuff so we've got more space for resources. Yeah, Minecraft is really one of those games that, like, if you were stranded on a desert island, you could just keep playing because of the level of creativity and escapism it provides. I think it's really second to none as a gaming experience. Like, I can't think of a game that allows me to feel more creative than this. Maps are 120k by 120k. Um whatever, like, 30 million blocks is, but that'd be, like, 30 million blocks in every direction, so 60 million meters square. I think is about three or four times the surface area of the, the planet Earth. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's genuinely so much potential. We got some diamonds. But then I think the lava kind of opens up beyond here, so I don't want to do too much more mining. Yeah, that'll do it. Fazu, thank you for the 100 bits. All is going well, yeah. Everything's, everything's pretty good. Got hoppers that won't pick up honeycomb. You just made a decent-sized bee sanctuary. Why won't your hoppers pick up honeycomb? If hoppers don't pick up items, then that sounds like some redstone somewhere may be active and is locking them. That would be my first instinct. But if it isn't that, then it may be that... Um the honeycomb isn't being picked up fast enough if you if you've got like a um a beehive or a bee nest and you're shearing it for honeycomb you might want to try using hopper minecarts underneath the hives instead of hoppers and just set up your hoppers one block further down below the hopper minecarts because sometimes the hopper pickup just isn't fast enough to catch the items as they fly out whereas um hopper minecarts are faster and the way their hitbox works means they can kind of collect stuff through blocks at times which is pretty helpful
Or in Bedrock, they can fly anywhere. Yeah, I, I can't really help much with Bedrock stuff because... Item behavior and mechanics are different in subtle and distinct enough ways that... I'm not always really able to, uh, to assist in that regard. Now, hoppers can pick up items through certain blocks. Uh, bee nests and beehives are the exception to that. Like, they specifically made an exception so that honey and honeycomb farms could continue to work the way they do. Some bug at the moment. Hopper minecarts aren't running on rails properly. It's happening to some of your farms. Like in the current release version. Because I know they're making changes to uh, hopper minecarts in snapshots, but I think that's just an experimental thing, right? It also depends how you have the minecarts set up, because minecart behavior is kind of funky. Finally, we encounter a little patch of diamonds. Cheeky little eight vein. I'm not going to turn my nose up at that. Got some moonstone here as well. That's nice. I wonder if putting redstone ore somewhere in the build, if we're working with natural deep slate textures would look kind of good. Kind of a <laughs> Empire's Season 1 FWIP aesthetic. I think we'll probably return to the surface with what we got, though. I think that seems like enough deep slate for now. Have a line of hoppers under the nests and a row unobstructed in front of the nests because the honeycomb lands just out of reach. Yeah, it's a lot of hoppers, isn't it? You sort of want to Um, limit that if you can. But then the hoppers below the nests probably don't have a ton of um, resource impact or anything because of being directly below. Oh yeah, a laser, another really interesting uh, solution to that. That's another another good call. Given up on hoppers in my bee farm, they have a pet LA now. Yeah, like like that. Like I said, that's that's a really good uh, good solution to that problem. As long as you've found LAs in your world, then that seems like a great way of using them. I think the sun is currently rising, but let me quickly get some sleep. And make sure of that. Apparently I made the advancement to Sincinocyte ore, which is funny because I was working with that earlier. If you take damage, it sounds like a bat. It's actually rabbits because I have bunny slippers on. That's what's giving me uh, resistance to full damage, but because I'm... Uh, double jumping and then flying with elytra if I like if I fly at something too fast I collide with it at this point it's unlikely to kill me because I have like 80 something health but that's uh, that's what's happening 
We'll take the Moonstone Aura and drop that in here, just in case we need that later for something. I guess the modded ores actually go in one of these, right? There's a Yeah, there's a chest here that I started silk touching stuff into. Okay, cool. And we've got these two string that we can throw in there. We'll craft a few more torches, just so eventually I'll get rid of the sticks in my inventory. Right. And then, yeah, I think we want to roll back some of the deep slate bricks that we've been using here and really uh, really aim to have more natural deep slate in this build. Should be slightly easier now it has some structure, though, because at least this way we can place the deep slate without considering, like, rotation a problem. <laughs> Have you had to play around with the lays somewhat new to the whole Minecraft experience? Oh, sure, yeah, 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 take your time with it, of course, but, um, yeah, got plenty of videos on them in Survival Guide if you, uh, need a, a step in the right direction, you know, a, a gentle nudge. Well, that's just oh, dang it, I just... Erased the uh, wall plants. That's not too bad, though. The Gecromancer doing well out here. Yeah, I think having a little different texture in here is going to be much better. Also makes the whole area look a little bit more, I guess, worn down. And if I can make... natural deep, state, deep slate blocks, then that's great, but it seems like I can make columns with them and that's about it. Unless I can do that in a crafting table. Yeah, you have stuff like this, the deep slate, like, corner trim and everything, but, like, there aren't any natural deep slate slabs. So those will all still have to be deep slate variants made out of the cobbled stuff. And I think the closest we really get to natural is either polished or tile. So... Got a couple of decisions to make there. But I've only really used stairs on some of these sections where it really feels like having the bricks here makes sense anyway. And Deep Slate is still rotational too, so if we wanted to, we could pop that down there. The torches are in there to make it look like these windows are glowing. But yeah, we've got some, uh, some textural interest. Maybe we'll leave these... Like that. And then the stuff in there could potentially have, like, less of the deep slate natural texture in it because it's not as exposed to the elements. It's more open feeling. I'm now sort of wondering if we should just have these logs go all the way down to meet the roof line. Just because it makes this... Mm, well, no, that's that's not going to work for that side, is it? Never mind. 
we'll leave it the way it was. If we wanted to keep some of the stone going up into here, we could replace these with some sort of stone pillar and use the deep slate corner blocks, the corner trim pieces, but I'm not that worried about that. Are there mossy deep slate variants in this pack? Unfortunately not. That's what I was looking for when I found the mossy um, grim stone brick, which is what I wanted to use around the outside here. But there is mossy cobblestone, there is mossy limestone, and then grim stone brick, which is part of uh, Philip's ruins, and then mossy cobblestone bricks from twigs. But outside of that, there's no, uh, there's not really any mossy variants. There isn't even really too much moss that you can apply to the outside of something to change the texture. The only stuff I've found was um, the wall moss that we found in Better Nether. And then there's this Spanish moss, which I think you just find as you're exploring in some of the uh, far-flung biomes. And then, of course, there's moss blocks and carpet and the usual kind of stuff. But, like, lichen moss is another thing that just seems to be a block that you find. doesn't seem to have a crafting recipe or anything. There's a lot of stuff in Better End that I think is a really cool aesthetic. Like the the plants that are all this kind of, like red to purple to blue gradient, I think look really pretty. It's the kind of stuff I would want to build with around here. You get some in better nether as well. So I'm kind of curious if we can incorporate some of those later. I think where I can, I'm going to try and keep the deep slate feeling horizontal. Oh, and I guess that's like the slab variant, so yeah, we need to start putting that in there. Dr. Becquerel, thanks so much for the 26 months. Welcome back. I can't quite do that while flying. That's uh, a little bit of a reach. Yeah, if we can keep some of the bricks over the windows like that, they still feel like they're part of the structure in a really interesting way. Maybe we take out that one. I don't know. I think I'm liking that a little more. You missed most of the stream? Hey, no worries. We're going to be here for a little while longer. And then we're going to be switching over to Elden Ring to continue playing that. So there'll be a good amount of gameplay today. Need to take out this log and this log to put the torches in so that those windows can look lit up. And yeah, the gameplay today has mostly been just working on the structure of this manse. Sad to see so much modded? Well, you can leave until we get back to vanilla, can't you? You don't have to be here. So, 
this section here is now six blocks wide because of that log there. I'm wondering if we should do something about that just to make that window look like it's kind of more centered on the roof line. I think the problem is because we now have this section here, that's slightly offset. I think it'll look fine if we make it symmetrical on the opposite side, though. You like that D&D is on a break and we get to have more Minecraft? Well, the thing is, um... D&D was always every other week, so... Like, I'd be streaming Minecraft today anyway, because we finished D&D last weekend. But I would be uh, doing Minecraft now anyway. I do D and D too. Uh, yeah, um, me and a group of streamers called the Eight Bit Community have a a D and D campaign that we have just finished the latest arc of the campaign. Our characters are now level ten, and we'll be restarting that at some stage. But until our DM has prepared like the next phase of the campaign, I'm actually going to be DMing some stuff in a completely different system. So I guess GMing, if it's not strictly speaking D&D. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be taking everybody through a, um, a Morkborg game at some point, which is going to be really fun. Um, we might be starting that in October, which is great because it'll coincide with Halloween and stuff. What class is my character? I'm a monk. I am a level 10 drunken master. Uh, Monk is kind of my preferred playstyle in RPGs in general. Like, I like the unarmed combat flavor quite a lot. So yeah, I've been a, a Drunken Master Monk in this campaign for a, a little while. I've never played a Paladin, actually. Except when I've made, like, Paladin NPCs in, like, my home game. I actually played a little bit of D&D &D on Friday, because uh, my brother-in-law might be joining our home game, so he's rolled a Dwarf Barbarian character, and it's my first time really GMing for a Barbarian, and so he had a couple of really, like, what should have been more dangerous combat situations, uh, definitely turned out in his favor. <laughs> It was uh, it was honestly kind of shocking to see how well barbarians do in like more dangerous combat. Like he hits like a truck, and it's very cool. So that's the end of our roof line on this side. We'll bring the iron bars out here. And I guess the... Yeah, second row of iron bars goes one block further down. Pounds can get OP very quick if they roll well. Oh, sure, yeah. We have a paladin in our group. We've got a um, dragonborn paladin in the uh, the home game that I do. You've seen Conan, right? I mean, not for a long time. I think I remember the Conan the Barbarian cartoon more than I remember the, the actual Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, movie.
Isn't Conan an American TV presenter? Well, yes, that too, but in his days off from being a barbarian. Where's my blackstone gone? All my blackstone used up. And stone cutter. We could also put some cracked blackstone into the roof here, but we'll add some more detail to the roof later when we can afford to. Does that go all the way out to the end there? I guess it does, right? Yeah. So then in here, wait a sec, I think, oh yeah, we made that full block so we could put the bars there. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, okay, great. Let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Ah, uh, let me down. So let's keep that full blocks. Drop down here and pick up anything that got left behind. Oh yeah. And then the roof back there is going to get even taller most likely because of the... Uh, the rest of the house being slightly larger so we can put in like towers and some stuff that's going to make it more asymmetrical unusual looking we need windows out the front here too but then being two blocks wide is going to be odd so i'll figure out something that i can do with that how do you get inspiration over and over again i've been building the same capital cathedral for five years Inspiration a lot of the time comes from just absorbing other media, so like anything that you find interesting production wise in like, you know, TV, film, other video games, like look into building stuff that looks similar to that. Like I take a lot of inspiration from the other games that I play. It's one of the reasons I've been playing Elden Ring a lot lately, is to try and absorb some of that kind of gothic dark fantasy world stuff, which this isn't necessarily an emulation of that, but that worked really well for Empire Season 2. And I'm planning on taking some of the environment design from stuff and using that in Survival Guide in this new build area that I've got. That I'm working on sometime soon. Um, yeah, we still need to ornament the roof in a couple of ways. And I think the Blackstone bricks are starting to have the same issue that the Deep Slate down here did. In that they're a very similar texture and sort of repetitive. But the question really is how does it look once we have more of the roof sketched out and is there any like black stone are there any black blackstone tiles or anything that i can use i don't think so right there's not really the soul infused blackstone if we want it to look ridiculous and weeping polished blackstone that's just got some weeping vines in that could be an interesting textural change up here if we really wanted it to go that far it looks pretty intense though so i don't know um but yeah cracked blackstone could work um, withered blackstone just looks more organic than it does structural, so we'll see. There's blackstone at Stormix Ore. And then obviously there's gilded blackstone and other bits and pieces like that. Is, the, is this the house being finished? Uh, it's definitely not finished. <laughs> It's definitely uh, taking on more of the character that I imagined for it when we um, we started building this whole area, right? Like, I'm, I'm getting there. I think I actually want... I'm going to take out some of these lower, well, like, shrubs and stuff. We're continuing the, like, wastelands, almost like graveyard plot style thing around here. But I want a tree growing up in this corner and it could be a natural tree from this mod pack because obviously there are 
a ton of those that look really good without me having to build anything custom. We could even use one of the um, brimwood trees that I've been getting these logs out of, but I like the idea of having something that's a different colour. Maybe even a um, an autumnal red leaf tree out here somewhere. Would certainly make sense why there are so many red leaves here in the the courtyard, you know? Calisalvo, thanks so much for the 15 months. Welcome back. Did I leave the windows in storage? I believe I did, right? Yeah. They were down here somewhere in the, yeah, the glass section. So, yep, we'll hop up to this. Can't quite make it in from this side because, of course. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way this has come along. It actually looks more coherent as a build now. Ow. Yeah, I think maybe this corner log does need to go. I like this one because it widens the front section in front of that window. And we can build up a better frame around that window later. But I think this log is unbalancing the way this side of the build looks. Which means we have to come up with some other solution for this trapdoor situation, but... Let's let's consider that, shall we? Let's remove this log and see what happens. It definitely evens out the space here to put a window in. And I think we can find something to go there that's going to look better. Like, maybe we put, like, a little stone platform kind of thing here. Oh, thanks, Eloise. I think this is looking all right now, yeah. Like, if we put just, like, a couple of deep slate bricks in there and we put something there, that still makes sure that this is an odd number wide, still levels everything with the, the window up there, the window down here. Or we could put something on the opposite side adjacent to that log, and I suppose it wouldn't look too bad either. Because then this row of trap doors is still, like, six blocks wide, right? So if we do something like this now, is that going to look weird next to the, the log there? It's just the fact that the trap door can't go around a corner that's, like, kind of throwing me, you know? Like, is there... See, these are the corner trims, but we can only put those, like, upside down or right side up, and we're using them there. They can't really look like they're in the corner in the same way that, like, stairs. There's nothing that lets us manipulate stairs in a way that just gives you the corner piece, either, I don't think. Because that's a thing in some, like, if, if a mod pack lets you make, like, a debug stick kind of tool. But I don't think there is. So if we put some sort of, like, whether we can make statues. There's not, like, a statues. No. Again, these were the only ones that we could really make with these, like, these king statues that I think you can find. But we'll put a window in there and then we'll see what we can do to make it more, um, more aesthetically framed. Uh, 
I think once again we need to have the end textures here hidden. And then here's the thing. Here's the main question. Like, do we put slabs here and set the window one block back? Like, do we want to put, like, slabs here and then have the window inset into a deeper frame? Gives us a bit more depth for this. And dress it up a bit more around the outside. But inset into the wall there. Maybe we'll try that. And maybe we'll try that with like dark oak corner trim. Because that's a thing, right? I think dark oak probably fits the... Oh, there's like lattice and stuff? Oh. Yeah, stuff like this. I think that's going to work quite well next to this type of wood. I think we'll be able to get away with that. Even if it's not, strictly speaking, the same wood type. I don't have much dark oak, though. We need to go and find the trees for that. I'll put these away for the moment. And yeah, the brimwood on this side needs to do the same thing. and bop, and then three slabs of blackstone, probably. Does this pack have the chipped mod? I don't think so. No. No, we do not. Because then I think people would just be going even more ham than they already are. Um, yeah, these windows will tuck away for the moment. We might want to do something slightly different with the windows. Maybe like trapdoors over glass or something. Just so it's not all the same stained glass pattern, you know? We'll put away all of the deep slate and stuff as well. Just to give ourselves a bit more room to think here. And the brimwood stuff can go in the chests. I do really like Brimwood as a, a building material. I think that's a really fun one. Definitely gets my uh, most improved vote. Um, yeah. So let's go find some dark oak real quick. I'm sure there'll be tons of it in other biomes that I just haven't spotted yet. But let's bring out the, uh, the nature's compass and look for dark forests. Okay, yeah, there's one like 500 blocks away. That'll do. I've been thinking of the biome in Minecraft as Dark Oak Forest for so long, it kind of blew my mind that it's just called Dark Forest. Although it may be that the biome classification did change at some point, because they did change the names of a couple of them, like... Uh, old Growth Spruce Tiger and stuff. Yes, of course, there's this one over here, great. And some really tall Dark Oak trees as well. Well, let's uh, begin our logging operation a little further in. But then I think if we can get a nice big tree like this one. It's probably going to take down more than one because the leaves connect up in the canopy. Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll just get that one. But it's got a ton of logs in it, so that should be okay for what we need here. And we've got six saplings, so we can make another one if we want to. Perfect. I've heard people refer to them as roofed forests. Yeah, that might be another thing that they were called for, for a while, right? Flamingos! Flamingos! 
love a flamingo. Yeah, so if we come up here, we'll throw down the crafting table, we'll get these planks out, and then this. If we do something like that, that'll definitely work, like against the color of that, because these corner trim pieces don't really have a brown that is darker or grayer than that. <laughs> the fact that there's dripstone corner trim, that's that's cool. Um, but yeah, if we wanted to do something like that, then we can border the window in a few more dark oak trimmings as well if we want to have it blend better. But then if we inset the window by one, we'll use some uh, black stained glass or... I still don't want to use this framed quartz. I think that's too... Right, but if we get some black quartz glass and then put trap doors over the top of it, that could work. Because I think we have some quartz glass already smelted in here, and I can just dye that. We can paint it black. Wherever I left some of the dyes, there we go. We've got that at least. Um, yeah, so we've got eight blocks of that that we can use. And now I'm putting it in the wrong place. Good thing we have silk touch. Well, that seems to have fallen on the outside. I wonder if maybe we mix the quartz glass and some regular black glass, because that looks even... Although I don't know, because we're going to be adding trapdoors to it, right? So I was like, it doesn't feel like it's got a whole lot of framing to it, but then if the whole point of this is to not have framing, then that works fine for my purposes. I've got a couple of wither roses I can turn into black dye. I don't really need to use them for anything else. I think there's like a demon heart or something that we have to have to save the um, wither roses for later, but I'm not on that particular quest right now, so... Dark oak trapdoors in this pack still look like chocolate bars, right? Yeah, okay. We also have the dark oak pillar trim that we could maybe use around the outside of this because that's still going to come down like this. And then maybe we put the trapdoors, I mean we could do them on the inside rather than the outside, but yeah, we couldn't have them occupy the same block as this. One wonders. We also got Palisade if we want that. Does that feel better to you? Hmm. We need to get rid of this. The question is, do we put corner trim in here and have it be framed all the way around? It sort of looks like the window of some old library. But can we place it? Oh, we can place it flat! Excellent. Good. Wonderful. I want to build a library now with this as the aesthetic. That's so cool. Like, if you fill that up with books... Oh, 
Yes. What a grand bookcase that would look like. We definitely need to put another glass block in there because from an angle you can actually see where the um, the block is missing behind that where I was cheaping out on the materials. We can't have that. Absolutely not. Plus I think it might affect the light level but that's not the biggest deal because this isn't tinted glass or anything. Um... Yeah, so we need to have some framing elements around that, I think. Just so it's not just inset into the wall in a different wood color, but man. I like this stuff for framing out windows. I think that looks really cool. So we'll do exactly the same thing of there. Of course, we have to. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that absolutely looks like library furniture. That says, like, old Victorian, like, posh house library to me. That's like, you go to a National Trust place and they've got like a big room of, you know, velvet roped off library stuff. <laughs> That's absolutely what that looks like to me. Uh, how is that? Oh yeah, that's the corner pieces. That's the pillar trim. Yeah, great, great, great. With old leather bound books, exactly. When is the next survival guide? Uh, when I can make one. <laughs> Which I know is a vague answer, so I'm sorry about that. I won't have one out for tomorrow. Um, I'm still just working on, like, research and build ideas and stuff like that. Stuff that, like, I can't really make an episode about because I can't really explain what it is that I'm doing. Where did I put all of the quartz? Is it still in the furnace? It's still in the furnace. Okay, cool. We'll keep smelting that then because we need more quartz glass. I'm still not 100% confident in the window itself looking so transparent, but maybe that will be a better effect once we have a room behind that. Like if we box this out and it's got like wood paneled walls inside of here and everything. Yeah, we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, we'll need eight blocks of this in order to craft more. Frame my door with it without having to go one block inside. Great solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, that should be enough to do the other window. So we're ditching the blackstone slabs that I put here. And we're just going to do one of these. Nice, and then black quartz glass on the back like so. Perfect. Yeah, now you're talking. Now you're talking. It's got different color windows and everything. It's got three types of windows even, if you count those as windows, which I personally do. I think those could use a couple more like little framing elements, maybe like window shutters on the sides or something, but I think those those look pretty good. Obu, thank you for the 35. Just starting your day. Appreciate it. Welcome in. Yeah, if we could get the iron trap doors. <laughs> oh. If we get the iron trap doors to, like, go on here. Obviously with some, like, redstone on the back of them. I wonder if there's any way of... We've got redstone torches. Yeah, there's no way of, like, permanently applying power to something, but invisibly, I don't think. Obviously, like, redstone components are going to be different to just things that say redstone, but, like, I'm... Or if there's, like, a... I mean, there's so many, like, rings of power, right, that... What is this? Tempest. Looks kind of cool. Um, yeah, if I just get a lever on the back of one of these... If 
we just have to do this. Oh my goodness, there's some pillagers. I don't know if I like the dark iron there. I feel like it's kind of too much of a contrast with the black stone and the pillar elements at this point. So if anything, that's a good thing, because I wanted to try and decorate the outside of the rest of this. But we can take the levers off and maybe use wood trap doors that we can close manually. Because obviously there's a variety of those. We're already using the putrid trap doors. There are dead trap doors, which are s separate. Juniper looks kind of cool. As far as window shutters go, dark cherry also looks quite nice. It's a vinery thing. And there's there's always copper, of course, but I think the copper colours are too bright for what we're going for here. Lucernia. <laughs> We've got wart trapdoors. That's fun. Um, dark amaranth as well. Yeah, there's a few different ones that we could be using here. Of course, there's the old favourites. The spruce trapdoors never look bad. Rotten trapdoors from better archaeology if you have rotten planks. we got some options there for sure. But yeah, maybe I'll put the dark iron trapdoors away for now and we'll find some other place to use them here in the build. It'd be kind of cool if there were, like, wither skeletons, like, hanging in the windows or something. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, this is all getting there. Like, I feel a lot more confident in how this looks, at least from the outside. We do still need to finish the uh, gable ends here. But I think we'll do that just in wood. We won't worry about putting windows in there, because we've already got windows in the upper floor. So if we switch back to the blackstone bricks just to finish this off. Oh, hang on. Wrong place. This is blackstone slabs along the end here. I guess I'll sleep quickly just to make sure that we don't get too many mobs out and around. Yeah, we could make like a little uh, jump scare with a skeleton in the window. I think that's really fun. Fun idea. Such a meaty sound for the stone cutter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I need to plan out the rest of the footprint of this thing before we really do too much more with the roof. Because otherwise I won't know which direction to take the roof line and none of it's going to add up when we finalize any of this. I do need to make more dark iron bars because I don't think I have any of those left in here. No, okay. So we'll either have to go and find more graveyard structures or we'll just have to make the iron ourselves. And then I assume these are just made the same way as regular iron bars are. We get 16, that's good. Can make it like it if they open a certain trapdoor, it falls from the roof onto them, like a like a a jump scare trap of some kind. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So behind this, we'll just continue the brimwood upwards. Wherever I left that in here. There we go. 
We've got plenty of strip logs from where we made holes for the windows, so... We can just pop those up here. So at least this will look like a reasonable facade from the outside instead of leaving it like half finished when we log off here. And yeah, I think we need to match this on this side. Match that on that side. Pop that in. What type of blocks are those with the orange rings? Uh, these are Brimwood logs from Better Nether. There is a... Um, a biome that I think is called, like, Infernal Halt or something like that, which has Brimwood in there. I wonder if we can do something just very quickly. Blackstone. If we can do something to shape these just a tad differently. I wonder if that's as simple as just taking these out and making them slabs like that, or or possibly even stairs. Let's make the stairs with a stone cutter just for efficiency. Um, let's do those. Yeah, I think that's just ornate enough. Without it being like a fancy extra block, it's just got that slight... That slight change up to it. I can't break that because it's going to be visible from the sides, right? Yeah, so that will do. Does Nether have the fancy Sin Sinusite fortresses? I think it does, yeah. I think I've seen them once or twice when I've been out there in the Nether. Okay, well, we've made pretty good progress here. It's been building the whole time. We haven't really done any, like, quest stuff uh, on this stream. But let's take a quick... <laughs> it looks kind of weird with the windows having just, like, grass and stuff behind them. But you know what? I really like the way this is working out. Modded building certainly has its charms. I'll give it that. We do still need to do a couple of framing things around the outside of the magma windows. And we need to have probably some more framing elements around the... around these windows here as well. One thing I need to do is get rid of that extra log on the right-hand side, because I did that for the left-hand side and I haven't done that. And otherwise that's going to drive me mad, because... I will have, like, completely forgotten to remove it. So we just put, like, a deep slate block in there. And we put one here as well on the opposite side, I think. Yeah, that's what we did there. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. So that's at least going to match now. Like, you wouldn't think of symmetry as, like, the starting point for creepy mansion. Like, if anything, it might be unsettling for the lack of symmetry, but we can establish a style and then break the conventions of that style a little later, right? 
let's do a couple of closer in shots like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good so far. We'll get one that's like straight on from the roof of this house. <laughs> Look at the Gekromancer just kind of chilling in the yard. Grim and foreboding house that it is. Right. I think, folks, that is where we'll wrap up the Minecraft portion of the stream. Still lots to do, obviously. I mean, we have one-sixth of an exterior, basically. Um, but I'm really happy with the progress. And we've got some materials that we can use as, like, a style guide for the rest of the build now. Once we figure out, um, like, any of the remaining footprint of the house, we'll just be able to build up from there. So, a lot happier with that, I think. Because I really didn't want to leave this unfinished. I'm thinking about maybe stepping away from Fantasy Minecraft once I've got more of this build done. Because I really need to spend more stream time in Survival Guide. I feel like Survival Guide has suffered because I have been spending more time here. And a lot of folks who are doing this like as a stream only SMP don't stream at the same time I do. So I think a lot of the time I'm missing out on the opportunity to have interactions and stuff. But I can't always stream at the same time other folks do. So yeah, I think maybe I'll continue building maybe do a couple more like questing kind of streams but then we'll go back to doing vanilla minecraft on these streams a lot more regularly i think is going to be my plan um so yeah we'll we'll take a quick break for now and then i'm going to come back with probably a fresh pot of tea and i'm going to continue my latest elden ring playthrough the idea is that we're going to be completing the playthrough with the arbalest today um so i'm going to come back and stream uh, in about 10 minutes uh, with some more elden ring and then We'll see how far we get, and hopefully we should be able to start a fresh playthrough on Tuesday with Zloy XP doing seamless co-op in Elden Ring uh, alongside a little bit more Fantasy Minecraft. So if you're going to continue watching some Minecraft, if you want to go off and watch somebody else, I'm not going to raid anybody, but whoever you decide to go and watch, I'm sure there are plenty of folks streaming Minecraft right now. If you want to stick around, very much appreciated because Elden Ring is up next in about 10 minutes time. So if you're sticking around, thanks for waiting, and I'll be back in a minute. Bye for now. <laughs>